So here we have another version of the male reproductive system. All right, so uh, we have a couple of landmark structures here. I'm actually going to start on the posterior aspect. So this would be the sigmoid colon right, and leading down into the rectum where we're going to hold the fecal material uh, before defecation. That rectum goes through the, this structure, uh, the urogenital diaphragm, and you can see below that it leads to this muscle tissue which is the external anal sphincter. A couple of other landmarks that you see from this view, you've got the urinary bladder and two tubes that come down from the kidneys that lead to that, those would be the ureters. Be careful not to mistake the ureters for the vas deferens, which is this tube here. A uh, couple other structures you can see from the posterior view, you've got the vas deferens itself, the seminal vesicle or seminal gland, right, and that leads down to this structure right here, which is the prostate gland. On the front side of this, a couple of other landmark features, we have the scrotal sac, which contains the male gonads, which are the testes, and the penis. So what we're going to do is actually follow our sperm through the tract. So we're going to start here at the scrotum. So the tissue on the outside, the skin, is called the scrotum. And as we move deeper into this uh, layers of tissue, you'll find these red lines right here. These are representing what's called the cremaster muscle. So all these little red lines. That is a muscle that helps to raise and lower the scrotum in relation to body temperature. So remember, the sperm has to be outside of the body to maintain a, a lower body temperature in order to be um, to mature correctly. So if we turn this, or if we go deeper into our tissue, that's when we're going to find the testes. So that's where the sperm are made. They are then sent to the epididymis. So epi means on top of, so it sits on top of that testy. Right, that's where the sperm go to mature and be stored until they're ready. Right, so then we follow the epididymis down and we move up into this tube right here, which is the vas deferens or ductus deferens. So that actually will move all the way up and go into the body through this canal, uh, this opening called the inguinal canal. So the canal through the groin region, that's what inguinal uh, refers to. Now before we move all the way to the rest of that, we need to talk about the rest of this uh, material in here. So in this whole structure, we call this whole structure the spermatic cord. And in that, you're not just going to find the vas deferens, you're also going to find the red and blue structures in here that's representing arteries and veins. And you're also going to find nerves that run through that spermatic cord. So all of those things go up through that inguinal canal and into the interior of the body. So if we follow this vas deferens down through, you'll notice that it goes to the posterior part of that bladder, again getting us to the vas deferens here and that seminal gland or seminal vesicle. The rest of it we can see easily from the inside, so we'll open this up. So here we can see all right, where the vas deferens and the seminal vesicle merge. We end up with this little tube here, and this is called the ejaculatory duct. So it's sitting within the tissue of the prostate gland, which is all of this. There's the ejaculatory duct. Uh, and the ejaculatory duct then merges with the prostatic urethra. So this is where the urinary and reproductive systems of the male are going to meet. Um, Past the, or, uh, past the prostatic urethra, we move into the membranous urethra. And we call it membranous urethra because it's moving through the body membrane, which remember we call the urogenital diaphragm, or essentially the floor of the pelvis. It's a muscular tissue. Within the urogenital diaphragm, you can see this little structure right here. This is that bulbourethral gland, or Cowper's gland. Uh, that's going to secrete uh, fluid into this tube here, which is the penile or spongy urethra. Now we call it the penile urethra because it's located all the way throughout this penis tissue. You could also call it the spongy urethra because of this tissue outside here. It surrounds that uh, urethral structure and this tissue is called the corpus spongiosum. All right? And uh, on top of that or superior to that you're going to find this sort of spongy tissue which is called the corpora cavernosa. Now these tissues are spongy uh, so that they can engorge with blood during sexual arousal to cause an erection. If we keep on following our flow here, we make it out to the tip of the penis and that would be called the glans penis. If we take a look at this from a different view, I'm actually going to do this. 
put this together. So this is what the glands would look like from the outside. Uh, now, when a baby is born, that glands will not be exposed. There's actually a piece of tissue that covers that that's called the prepuce or the foreskin. So when you do a circumcision, it's actually cutting that tissue away. And you'll see all of our models do not have that prepuce or foreskin on them. We can also take a look at this tissue here. Just mind the prong there, all right. And we can see these two pieces of tissue. That would be our corpora cavernosa, corpora, because that's plural, there's two, all right. And then this tissue here is actually that purple tissue. That would be the corpus spongiosum. Notice that it completely surrounds that penile or spongy urethra.